Welcome to the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Vantage Circle, the leading employee benefits and engagement platform. Hi everyone, this is Rohit from Advantage HR Influencers Podcast and today I'm excited to have Amit Malik who's a Chief People and Customer Service Officer at Aviva Life Insurance. Amit has over 19 years of experience in leadership roles at companies like American Express, Bank of America and others. He's been he's an alumni of Symbiosis Pune and Oxford State Business School. Welcome to the show, Amit. Thanks, uh, Rohan and thanks for having me on the show. Right. So, um, now, Amit, how did you get into the role of HR and what got you excited to, you know, pursue your career there? Well, you know, I was an, I'm an engineer who decided to pursue HR. So two years into my engineering course, I realized that is not, that is not something I wanted to be. So I definitely didn't want to do an engineering job. And at that time in the nineties, the other, the, you know, you had very limited options and MBA was one of them. So right. when I decided what to do in MBA, there was sales and marketing and human resources. And HR at that time was, you know, doing that transition from personnel management to human resource management. And it was, it was at a very, very, uh, it was at an inflection point as a function. And I, and I spoke to a couple of people who guided me. And then when I got into SIBM Pune, which had the top two HR program in the country, I decided to pursue HR. So I'm disappointed uh, if your listeners were waiting for I love people kind of an answer, huh. but that's that's how it is. Got it. And you know, you've been uh, with Aviva India, and uh, and during you know the uh, the times of Corona virus, uh, how's Aviva India looking at engaging with their employees uh, during such uh, you know times of crisis? So uh, you know, like you said, I do multiple roles in Aviva India. I, I do op- I do people function and admin, and I also do operations, customer service, and retention. Right. And as as a function leader, uh, there is one responsibility that I have. But as a people function leader or as an HR leader, I have you know a different set of responsibilities. So when we looked at engaging uh, Aviva India employees, we looked at it at three levels uh, primarily. The first level was communication. Uh, you know, we just we just changed the whole style of communication that we had, uh, which was pre-COVID to post-COVID. It, it all went on to WhatsApp, short videos. You know, videos from the desk of CEO and MD who's Trevor, myself, other leaders, and, you know, very, very focused, short communication and the communication, which was more leaning towards customer, focusing on doing the right thing for our customers and our employees at that time. So very positive, focused campaign from a, from a communication standpoint. The second was uh, we started to look at uh, how do we help employees at home manage so we called something called work feeling happy uh, campaigns, you know, rather than uh, work from home WFH, we, we said work feeling happy. Here, what we did was we looked at four themes, which were health and well-being, mindfulness and gratitude. We also started to look at building resilience. And the fourth was economy and finance. And we started to build activities, quizzes, knowledge uh, sharing around all of these for our employees so that, you know, they could get engaged. And the third level was learning. Uh, we decided that there was an opportunity for us to get people who were at home to start to learn so that their minds could be focused on something else other than anxiety and, you know, uh, anxiety that was being spread. So we, uh, we, uh, my learning team curated eight, over eight, 8,000 uh, learning resources uh, for our 1,800 employees quickly. And, you know, it was in all fields. It was right from coding to fine arts to photography to social media advertising to mindfulness to leadership, to upskilling. So whatever you wanted and whatever interested you was the content that got curated uh, and, and was shared and disseminated. We also had some specific webinars for our senior management, for our frontline, for our customer service. So while while there was horse, uh, you know, courses for horses uh, kind of a thing, but there was also a lot of uh, focus on what interest people would have. And that's how we decided to you know engage our employees during this time and kind of interact with them. Got it. And, you know, as, as you mentioned that you, you, along with uh, being the head of people function, you look at operations and customers uh, service function, you know, how did this move where, which you had a transition, uh, you know, uh, two years back, how did this help you lead uh, during the COVID times? So uh, I think, uh, well, the move happened in, so I was in, for 18 years of my career, I was a, I was a true HR, a blue blooded professional. And then one day, you know, the, the organization decided that I could do the operations customer service role along with it. Mm-hmm. I think uh, what has, what has, what has helped me is it just brought that straight linkage from customer to the employee. 
so when when in times of uh, my you know in times of covid and crisis when we started to look at focusing on the customer like i said it just helped me uh, kind of understand that when we ask an employee to do a customer how is the what is the employee going through and what is the customer going through and uh, educating the employee to be able to build that whole customer perspective and say you know what you are anxious and uh, you are at home so is the customer and the customer is entirely going through the same thing so you know how do we deal with the customer what's the script that we use at this time what's the communication that should go to the customer what are the customer prospect points that are important for us i think that that whole people orientation uh, help me build build that gap and bring in that whole empathy and compassion for the customer far more uh, in the teams and to be able to share that how we how we bring that in for our own customers i think that's that's what helped uh, you know the brand also stands for a lot of compassion so if you look at aviva during the time of covid you would see of how much of empathy and compassion as a brand we we started to articulate you know about staying in house and you know doing the right things and you know how 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 safety was very important so we put that up and i think that whole understanding for me to communicate as a leader and say this is what we should be focusing on this is what we need to do this is how we need to manage our customers how to handle the you know the customer queries that will come how how do we need to approach it differently i still want to run my business i still want someone to pay for the renewal but how do i ask them and you know how do i get them to do it it was a, was a, was a different angle that covid uh, needed and that's what helped me bring it so i i hope i've answered your question absolutely uh, you know more so because you you handling different functions in in the company uh you talked about you know doing short communications and you know uh, speaking to the stakeholders be it customers and uh, or employees uh, and very interestingly you point about work a feeling happy uh, culture but you know are, are there any downsides to working in in a remote culture and do you think uh, you know that sort of a setup can uh, you know a remote work culture can work forever in a, in a big company like aviva see uh a great question and a tough one because the jury is still out on working from home and remote culture but you know let me just right. take a stab and give you my perspective i right. think uh, covid has helped break this whole mindset that employees can't work from home right. or if we enable uh, employees to work from home then there is too much of risk. see we are an insurance company we are such a regulated company you know data regulation a lot of it uh, do it pre covid every time we would want to do something we would be told oh you know this data privacy there is regulation we can't do it. i think that mindset is broken absolutely yeah. i think that's a positive right uh, work from home is here to stay yes because uh, both the organization and the employees have started to see the benefit but i don't think my personal view is i don't think it's going to be 50% or 60% work from home i think it will settle in somewhere between 20% to 25% people at any given time working from home and the rest you know 70 75% 80% people working from office because uh, it you know it has also brought the other side for people so everyone thought i got a majority of the people thought that wo- working from home was equivalent to work life balance right. but i think that myth has got broken that working from home is not equivalent to work life balance Correct. actually work life balance is working at office and working at home you know that Correct. that helps you balance a little more because that whole integration when it happened of work at home and work uh, from home that integration uh, has has led people to understand and realize that it's not it's not it's not that easy or that simple especially if you are a caregiver or if you are a mother with you know young kids or if you have a lot of commute time you know how does that help so i think it will be for each what works correct and you know amit uh, how can leaders and and hr managers boost the morale of employees duty during such times any any uh, thoughts on that i think first and foremost we all have to begin by acknowledging the situation right that's number one second do an honest assessment of where where each function is where each employee is where each organization is and the third is that we ensure that we give out hope and connect with people regularly because i think that's very very important i think that's the first step so if you look at if you look at the employee scenario you know there are there are three parts to it one is there are 20% or 25% of employees uh, who are doing 120 to 130% of their work so they are actually going above and beyond you know in this scenario right. there are then uh, the 20% on the other end of the continuum who are not able to contribute beyond 30 40% for whatever reason is it the, maybe it's the organization has not been able to enable them or they need systems that you know are in the office or they need to work on 
stuff in office, but you know, not their fault, but you know, organization. So that leaves us with the remaining 55, 60 uh, odd percent of people who are working as they were doing before lockdown, but are in a productivity range of say 70 to 100 percent, right? And leaders need to handle each of these category of employees with a very, very different mindset and a different approach. So, you know, first and foremost, I think if you're a leader, you need to acknowledge, you need to make sure that you acknowledge the effort of the, within the larger group and appreciate the people who, you know, you've shown great and willingness to step up to the challenge and one above and beyond. I think that's very, very important. Right. Second is, you know, you appreciate uh, your your middle category of people for keeping their head above the ground and doing whatever they could do, you know, in a regular days of work and, and tell them that, you know, even if they have not contributed over 100%, but how much value that whole 70, 80% has been for the organization. I think that that whole piece is important. But the most trickiest piece and the most difficult piece is when you go to the bottom 20 where you have employees who wanted to do more, but couldn't contribute. And then, uh, you know, and also are anxious about it because they see their colleagues and their peers contribute. So I think that's where you need to, you know, you need to make sure that you feel uh, that you make them feel very included. You continue to talk to them. You continue to share with them how you will increase their productivity and thus uh, get them to be able to contribute at a quicker rate. And I think that's where the leaders have to now come together and make their, you know, plans or BCP plans or whatever, you know, and as, and as people start coming back to the workplace, which we are now seeing, you know, people are restricting, restricting back to the workplace. This is that category where, you know, we should try and get them first so that, you know, we can, we can get rid of that anxiety. So I think underlying of all of this, what I'm saying is, is empathy. And, uh, in Aviva, uh, that's the, that's the theme that we have launched for in May and June, our coaching conversation. So we have five coaching conversations. And just because to, you know, to be able to get people to boost their morale and have a conversation on where they have been and how, how it can be. We have, we have started this whole June, May and June as, you know, mid May to, uh, end of June month for our coaching conversations where we are talking, telling our leaders to talk about stability, security and social connect. So that, you know, that whole conversation and the messages start. Right, right. Very interesting. And, you know, what can companies do, uh, you know, to make sure employees, you know, safely return back to work? It could be in the, in the month of June or July or whenever uh, employees are ready to come back to work. So we've already started two weeks back coming back to work. You oh, know, so okay. we, we, you know, we, we slowly, because we are insurance and we were essential service and, you know, we got permission in lockdown 3.02, right. you know, slowly start our office. But even see, I think even when the government is allowing us to do 50%, we are at 10 to 15% because I think first and foremost, we want to build the confidence. And how did we build the confidence? What we prepare is about how you prepare the workplace. So following the government guidelines is one thing, but how do we prepare? So we have like, we have, we have done everything that we could more than what the government has required to prepare the workplace and then communicated that with our, you know, with our, with our employees. And, you know, whether it's, you know, whatever you may say, you know, taking away the doors and changing the, changing the taps and doing all of that so that, you know, touch, social distancing, all of that uh, starts to come in. What we also did was, uh, we, we, we used a back to work document, but we used it with humor. So we started to talk about humor and coming back to work, you know, for example, saying all superheroes wear a mask. So when you, you know, you are one and wear a mask, you know, because you decided to come back to work. So we started to bring in humor, a lot of English in the English and kind of get back. So, you know, people, people, we got feedback saying people loved reading the back to work and you did those guidelines. That's the first part. I think the second part is uh, behavioral change. How, you know, when you get people in the office, how do you get them to change behavior? How do you get them to wear masks the full day? How do you get them to not start together, stand together and share stories because even if we need to understand they are also meeting after 50 days or 55 days. How do you make sure the coffee point congregation or conversations don't happen because you don't want that? So, you know, we've kind of done that behavioral change. And I think the third and the most important piece is setting the tone. Uh, and it always sets at the top. And, you know, my CEO was the first person in the office when we opened and as leadership team members, we have all constantly visited office and shared our own experience with the team because, you know, you set the tone. When you ask a customer service rep to come to the office, his whole point is, uh, his whole point always is that, uh, you know, you want me to come, but you want yeah. to work from your own comfort and safety of your home. So, you know, how do you tell that, that I'm with you in this, yeah. you know, we are in this, in this together. And that's the leadership setting tone, Rohit. So that's how we do. Very interesting. And 
you know, during the COVID times or even otherwise, you know, if, uh, if it's a remote uh, work setup, how do you keep the communication open between, you know, team leaders and other employees? So uh, what we did was during the COVID, see, actually the, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a question that gets me to the thought to say that the existing communication architecture has collapsed. The town oh. halls, the huddles, the Correct. team meetings, all of that is gone. Yes. And now we are in a new norm and we all have to think of new ways. So what we did during the, while obviously all, all that I told you earlier was an organization based communication. We made it mandatory for all people managers to check every, uh, over the weekend and on Monday report back for the employee well-being in a conversation. So we kind of just said you have to reach out to all your team members, all your directs. And everyone reaches out so that, you know, there's one communication. We we tasked our uh, HR business partners to speak to the workforce. So we've covered oh, oh, 100% recovered and then we've gone back. Now we are in the second round of our conversations of individually calling each and every employee to check on their well-being, family, challenges from working from home, anxiety level, any other issues. So we've done that. There's also been a lot of connect on activities, you know, which is we told the leaders to lead this and said, we get down, get onto a you know a call with your team, whether it's a telephonic call, whether it's you know teams or whatever mechanism we have to connect on activities, kind of and bring in the family. So we got in the social bonding. We got in do we got them to do quizzes and tambolas and stand up acts and do, get the social thing on the on the platforms and do it with the families now. So we started to do that. But I think as we look forward, you know, having said all of that. The degree of open conversation is always uh, a factor of the culture of the organization. And I'm very proud to say in Aviva that, you know, we've, we've been able to build that for a long, long time. So I think that uh, part, if it is not done, it can't be done overnight. And, you know, you need to build that. So I think that's for us to be done. And just like I told you, our, our whole idea of having coaching conversations in May and June is now taking it to people who are working from home to, you know, kind of getting it but I think that's that's what all one needs to focus on. Got it. And do you feel the engagement uh, scores are rising for companies? I, I've heard a lot of people saying that the productivity levels for for some of the employees have definitely risen up. But uh, you know, how how about uh, you know, have you checked the engagement scores across all verticals? Have, have that increased? So I'm I'm going to be a little provocative here, Rohit. Uh-huh. I think engaging employees is important, but as per me, doing the engagement surveys is not a priority. I don't think that's a priority because at the moment it's about it's about connecting, it's about uh, being there, and it's about uh, helping the employees make sense of the new norms. And uh, obviously, see, uh, I, you know, and, I, and I've said this earlier: uh, business metrics cannot triumph people metrics at this time. I think both have to go hand in hand. And right. everyone is trying to find order in this chaos, and right. uh, you know, we have to find the yardsticks. The time for engagement scores, uh, you know, performance metrics, surveys will come, and that will that that's that that's the next step. As in, when we start to assimilate people back to work and do that, because if you start doing that now, like I told you, of the three category of employees, you will immediately lose the bottom category of 20, 25 percent, right? And that's not what you want at this time. And uh, you know, you don't want you don't want to lose that whole chunk of employees at this time. You, know, you need you need to be you need to be there for them, and you know that so i think that's where i am at this. right you know you've talked about you know culture values uh which which are the you know the foundation block of a company but is it possible to refine such company values during during a crisis uh, not only during covert times but generally during a crisis what are your thoughts on you know how do you refine a company's culture i think the the acid test for any purpose and values uh, comes in in the time of crisis you know whether it's covid or no covid at the time of crisis because that's when you start to look at how you will behave and what you will focus on and mm-hmm. i think i think i think that's the asset test for every company because you know when you say that i care more like our values when we say i we care more how are we demonstrating for our customers and for our employees that we care more right and mm-hmm. you know i'll give you an example we were one of the first life insurance companies i think the first one which decided and said we will honor our appraisals promotions and bonus on the time that we do right we didn't we didn't defer we didn't get into that huddle. We just decided to honor. And that's that was our, you know, uh, point of saying, you know, we will do the right thing. We will do the right thing. And, you know, doing the doing the engagement plans, like I told you, or, you know, we did something called a caregiver leave. We gave leave of five days to all women employees who had kids between or under five and said, 
you even if it's locked down and you're working from home take five days off and you know just uh, no questions asked so that's our care mode and similarly for the customers you know you know when i say care more and you know we redefined the value and i'll give you this example when we started to look at covid and we started to look at digital enablement the issue was not to enable the customer digitally we always had the tools the issue right. was how do we educate the customer to use those digital tools right. you know we have a wide range of customers who are not tech savvy who are not you know who are, who are, who know that tools are there but they are not com- they are far more comfortable coming to a branch and handing over a check than doing an any fp even if they have a you know a, a, an any fp bank account or or going to going on a chat rather than calling up now if the call center is not functional then you need to come on a chat so how do we do all of that i think that's where we started to look at educating our customer and for me that is care more that is going the step beyond that is how i think we redefine uh, our value of care more you know similarly we have four values like one is care more then is never rest which is kill complexity and create a legacy now look at kill complexity we have simplified our processes you know you can't come home you can't go to the medical center for a medical but you want a life insurance policy we can't come to your house because it is locked down and your society won't allow your apartment block won't allow so what we will do we be introduced we had a video medical examination we just expanded it and said we will now start doing video medical examination or we will do cashless issuance or we dropped credit card charge we just simplified the things for our customers to say we will make it as simple as we can in a normal time it would have taken a lot of debate discussion risk assessment but here you know we were kind of we just redefined it immediately in line with our values so i think that's how it is and not only us i think a lot of organizations would have undergone this process uh, but i think the challenge for all of us is when we go back to the new normal how do we sustain the spirit right. how do we sustain you know make it a part of our life i think that's that's important you know there's going to be a lot of onboarding of new employees Uh, which is going to happen uh, in the next couple of quarters what is the best way you can communicate with remote workers who want to join the company so rohit we uh, we had the same conversation and challenge within aviva you know end of may early june uh, and i'll give you an example of two ends of the spectrum the first one was we had to have our summer internship program starting in april and the summer interns were supposed to join while they could not due to lockdown and so we decided to do an e onboarding and give them give them projects to work from home and and go ahead with the plan so you know we did typically what we would have done in a in a classroom setting right from the ceo's address to you know key departments update to for them to understand all about the organization but we did it differently we did it through you know two hours in the day uh, two hours in the morning two hours in the evening over a few days but we did uh, induct them like we should to tell them about companies back on the other end i've had an it leader who you know was in bombay and had to join us during this lockdown and couldn't travel and we've done the same with him you know to not only enable him to be able to work but also to able to understand the organization do the whole handover you know kind of meet up with the teams meet up with key stakeholders so do that whole process end to end and and get him to start you know being productive i think that's what it is but more than the e induction as i see it i think it will it will start to have an impact on the recruitment process where the candidates will now start to ask and question saying why do i need to come and see you Right. because if i'm joining you i'll surely come and you know join and you know join physically in an office but why do i need to come and see you with you know even if you are in the same town same city we can do a zoom and facetime or a teams or something and you know kind of do that so those steps will get uh, will get eliminated and that's how i think the shift will move correct and you know amit vantage circle is a is a rewards and recognition platform are there any tools which uh, you know aviva insurance uh, as a company uses to to reward their employees uh, reward and recognition for us is very very important at aviva you know we we empower our managers to reward employees and you know we have a we have a full fledged program where the focus is uh, and also on choice so when it comes to rewards it's a lot of choice and first get good more the tools tools per se but uh, we we give them a lot of choice in terms of what rewards they can choose on and for us that's logical step from a time point is a very very it's a individual reward socially uh, recognized with a choice for an employee so that's how that's how we use the philosophy got it uh, so i mean i quickly want to do the top three uh, what's your favorite business book Well, you know, I, I'm an avid reader, uh, Rohit. I read over 40 books a year. But you know, the three, two or three books that have actually influenced me a lot over the past uh, few months. Uh, one 
one is Illness by Hans Rosling. Right. Uh, the other book that was Brave New Work by Aaron Dig- uh, Digan. And, you know, I think uh, both these books are, have influenced me. And the one that, I don't know whether you heard about is Hard Thing About Hard Things by Books. Absolutely. So those are the books, you know, over the last six to nine months who have, who have left an impact on me. And, and do, you, do you have any favorite uh, HR leader or CEO whom you follow? That's a tough one, but uh, I think uh, I've started to follow and admire the And, and any piece of advice would you give to HR, young HR leaders who want to uh, get into HR profession? Yeah, I always, I always tell the young HR leaders, never believe that you are a support function. <laughs> I always say, this. I say you are a function that drives achievement of business objectives. You make the, you make the business future proof. But I also tell them that for this, they must know the business and the challenges that it faces going forward. That's my advice. Yeah, great advice. And, uh, you know, what are the best way people can reach out to you and, and know more about you? Uh, I think the best way is, uh, first is Twitter. So I'm a, I, I tweet very avidly. Uh, so, you know, you can reach out to me via Twitter and LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is some something that I'm there. So just find me on Twitter and LinkedIn. I'm there. Uh, thank you so much for, for taking your time and speaking to us. I really enjoyed speaking to you. Thank you, Roy. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. And thank you for the listeners. Thanks for listening to Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. Please do subscribe to Vantage HR Influencers Podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify for new episodes.